advice. It's with a pretty heavy heart that I'm, um, we're doing this message. Um, but at this point, if you haven't already seen the article about me from 17 years ago, or haven't heard the rumors or the buzz or the stuff that's um, going around, um, you probably will. And, you know, and we apologize that it's taken us a while to address it. It's still a little shocking and still trying to navigate it within our own family. So uh, one of the things I'm hearing over and over again is uh, people have questions about the story and is it true? And you have to know that when I first heard this story, when I first met Jim, he told me directly and right away, never tried to keep it a secret from me. I asked the same question, is it true? And I collected information from Jim and from his family members, um, as well as members of his then community. Um, where this happened, where the allegations happened. At the time this happened 18 years ago, Jim was separating in, in a very unpleasant divorce. Um, he was in an unpleasant custody situation. Uh, his ex-wife at the time, then wife, was uh, trying to attempt to get custody of the kids. And they were at the same time being kind to one of his ex-wife's best friend's children, or sisters, excuse me, who was a 15 year old who was, um, staying with them and she was pregnant. The 15 year old crossed boundaries in an attempt many times to be close to Jim. Um, and every time Jim stopped those boundaries from being crossed. But as part of concern for her, he reported those boundary crossings and he expressed them to people. And that is how these reports came out that he had been inappropriate. He was not inappropriate. He stopped the contact. But because he admitted to it by reporting it and trying to get the person help, it came back on him as if he had done something wrong. And so at the time I had three choices. Um, I could have fought it and that they flat out said, if I fought it, they were going to bring my two older boys into court. Um, they were 11 and seven at the time. Um, and I didn't want them to go through that. My other option was to um, take a plea bargain and not see any jail time, but get 10 years probation. And the third option, what the um, judge actually gave me was um, just plead guilty to it all and take the the sentence as is. What, as you saw from the article, was 15 months. Um, I served 10 months with good behavior. And Yeah. So I knew that these allegations weren't true. If they were true, they wouldn't have given him a child to raise and trusted him, um, despite anything else going on. So that that's something that I felt really strongly about. I also feel really strongly to share with you that I have been um, a female in our culture, and I know creep. And this man here isn't a creep. There was nothing ever that was a boundary violation with me or with members of my family. No one feels uncomfortable around Jim. Um, I mean, maybe because he sometimes leaves a mess behind uncomfortable, but not uncomfortable um, the way people are talking about. And, you know, people bringing this up now, for whatever reason, we wish they would stop harassing us.
and let us live our lives and let us live in peace. Jim's done great things for the community. He's the same person that you knew on Friday that you know today. It's just that you found out something that he doesn't like to talk about. It's a trauma for him. It's a trauma for his family. You know, and um, whatever happens, I don't want you to give up on Nippertown. Mm -hmm. It's not owned by me anymore. Mm -hmm. It's owned by the Gazette. They do have good plans for it. And um, whether I'm involved or not, you should still stay involved and support the local scene. And, um, and if you want to talk to us, call us. Don't reach out and post something. Call us. Ask us your questions. Express your concerns. That's what brought us to decide to do this post, because a few people today have said to me, why aren't you speaking out? Well, we aren't speaking out because, first of all, this is Jim's story from a long time ago, but it's also somebody else's story, and we don't want to talk about her story again. We are being respectful about what happened back then and trying to move forward. But we hear that people need to know. So this is our side. This is Jim's experience. And I just ask that you judge me for our interactions together and what you know of me, not something that you've read in a paper or heard from secondhand. Um, I think everyone here or anyone listening, you know, they've probably had interactions with me and I, am I perfect? I'm not perfect. I am far from perfect. No one's perfect. But I am not this. This no. is, this is, an, I, I abhor this and, and I don't condone this and would never do this. So hopefully if you have any questions, you can reach out to either one of us. Um, you know how to reach us? We're the same people we were before. And if you, you know, wonder, everybody's got something in their closet and we hope that you can understand that this was a period in Jim's life. It's not who he is. And, right. um, and I'm sorry, I just don't, it's not anything I, I ever talk about. I don't want it. I don't, it's not who I am. So I just, I didn't bring it to everybody because, you know, you think about it.